from that uh, professor at the University of Texas. So amazing, amazing stuff here. All right, now let's talk about content, and just here's the key things we want to talk about. So I want to say here that intensity is not the same as magnitude. I just want to make sure you get that key. Intensity is how much you feel. Magnitude is the actual amount of energy that's being released. So just don't get these two terms mixed up, intensity and magnitude. And just a, another important note is the magnitude of an earthquake. When, when you hear about an earthquake, they say the magnitude of the earthquake is whatever it is, 7.0 uh, or whatever it might be, and they, they uh, determine what that is really quickly. But it turns out that often as the scientists um, analyze the data from a particular earthquake, they will adjust it and say, ah, actually it's a 7.2 or maybe it's a 6.9 or whatever, because it does make a huge difference. So they don't really determine the actual magnitude for a number of days. They'll give you kind of a, a first rough estimate, and then they will, um, as, the, as the days go on, they'll figure out how to do it more. Okay, let's take a look at a cool um, in intensity interactive that will help us to understand. Well, here we go. Here we have the modified Mercalli intensity scale. This is intensity, make sure, intensity. And what I want to do is I want us to kind of see here if an earthquake happens. Let's watch the earthquake, uh, number one. All right, here's the earthquake. You've heard it. Cars driving by. Essentially, people do not feel the earth movement. They're just walking around, not a big deal. Well, let's make it a two. All right. Oh, people might notice movement if they are at rest in our upper floors of tall buildings. So this person goes, oh, it woke me up. Hmm. Okay, not a huge deal. All right, let's go to three. <gasps> people indoors feel movement. People outdoors might not. And hanging objects swing back and forth. Look at the, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, light poles. Let's go to four. Uh-oh. Dishes, windows, and doors. Rattle. People outdoors may feel movement. Cars will rock. How about a five? Oh, my gosh. People are awakened. Doors and op may open and close. Okay, it's getting more intense, isn't it? Let's go to six. All right, people have trouble walking. Objects fall. <laughs> you can see the cool. Plastered walls might crack, but damage is considered slight. Was that a six? I think we're up to seven. Seven, people have difficulty standing. Cars shake. Damage is considerable. Poorly built buildings may crumble. Look at this poor building. It was a seven. Let's go to eight. Uh-oh, it's getting very dangerous now. <gasps> you can't drive very well. Oh, poor car. <laughs> <laughs> and fault, but well-built buildings suffer slight damage. We, this poor building it had a bad day, didn't it? All right, uh-oh, we're going to go to a nine. <laughs> Considerable damage. Underground pipes are broken. You see the pipe broke. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that was a nine. Roman numeral ten. Oh, very bad. Most p buildings are destroyed. Yeah, this is bad. And, of course, an eleven. Oh my gosh, here comes an 11. Buildings collapse, bridges destroyed, underground pipelines are destroyed. How bad is that? So this is the Mercalli scale. It's kind of cheesy, but thanks to the University of Northern Illinois for helping us uh, do this. Uh, but you can get the idea. So this is intensity, and I think this helps us understand it. So how do scientists determine the magnitude when they say it's a 7.2 or a 2.2 or an 8.7 or whatever? Well, let's uh, look at an um, uh, animation that will help us understand our little, little scale, and that will help us figure this out. Well, as you know, scientists have data. I mean, we talked about the, the uh, seismogram. So let's take a look at a particular seismogram right here from an, uh, October 23rd, 1996. Essentially what we've got is I can move um, these numbers or these, these bars at different uh, intensities. The first one is where the S wave first appears. So the S wave first appears right here. So this is a function of also the distance, and it tells me that it's 168 kilometers. Um, that's the P wave, pardon me. And then here's my S wave, and I boom the S wave. It first arrived here, so looking right there. And then this green here has how big the wave is. And so what I'm going to do is go to the very height of the wave, which is up here, the top of the wave. And so what you've got is the amplitude here in the green, and then we've got the Richter magnitude determined right here, and it will tell me the Richter magnitude. So this particular earthquake was a 3 0.72. Okay, if we go to a different earthquake, I can bring that data in. Now, this one looks like a bigger, more intense earthquake. Here's the beginning of the S wave. It took 7.7 uh, .7 seconds, and it was 62 kilometers away. And then if I move the blue one over here, the beginning of the secondary wave, right, that was the P wave first, and now I need to move my amplification up to the highest point, which is right there. Now, now we have a 5.4 magnitude earthquake. You kind of see how this works here, and I can do one more here. Let's bring in one more here. Here's my primary wave. It starts here. Here's my S wave, 
and then my amplification is right there and so this would be a 3.6 earthquake so it's really this is how they, they uh, scientists figure out the uh, magnitude of an earthquake they basically use um, the data here there's some more math involved but uh, basically this computer program here does the math for you well, hopefully that helped you with that. Now let's talk about something called an intensity map. This is an intensity map of the 1964 earthquake in Alaska. And um, what you can see here is that, remember the Roman numeral systems where you have a, a 1 and a 2, etc. Here we have an 8 to a 10. So right through here, basically it's, it's like a contour map. Is They take in the, the earthquake started here at the epicenter. And then as the earthquake began, um, the worst part, of course, was right in here. So if you lived in this area, it was an 8 to a 10. But if you were here or here or here along this, if you will, contour line, or you call it an intensity map, you felt the earthquake the same. The way they do this is they'd actually go out and they'd interview some people and figure that out and that's uh, and say, well, how did you feel and what happened to this building and that building? And of course, the same thing here. If you're anywhere in this particular band, you felt the same intensity of the earthquake. And you can see it's not exactly the same number of distance because this distance right here is not the same thing as this distance. And some of that is a function of the land, what's it, what it's made of, etc. Um, and then, of course, now here's three and four was just here. Um, in this particular region. So hopefully this helps you understand how this all works. Well, let's talk um, or, or watch a quick video clip with Bill Nye. And Bill Nye is going to explain to us a little bit of the Richter scale and how the Richter scale works. Now, the ground can move in all different directions. But to start out with, let's say it's moving up and down, like this. See how we have a nice smooth curve? That's from the ground moving this way. Now let's say we have a bigger earthquake with a bigger ground motion. Let's say we have one ten times as high. Like this. See how this one is ten times higher than this one over here? So then the ground would take on a shape, something like this. Same nice curved shape, but this stack of chips is ten times as high as the one over there. But look how many more chips there are. You see, it takes a lot more chips to keep the curve in the same shape. The chips are like the energy, 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 in an earthquake. So when the ground moves 10 times as much, it has a lot more energy, about 32 times as much energy. And we have 32 times as many chips. Energy. Now, because the numbers can be very small or very large, Richter came up with the idea of using tens. See, let's say we have an earthquake of magnitude 1. Well, it's going to have some ground motion. We'll, we'll call it 1. Now let's say we have another earthquake of magnitude 2. Well, its ground motion is going to be 10 times as much. We just add a 0. Then for an earthquake of magnitude 3, we add another 0. So look, an earthquake of magnitude 3 has a hundred times the ground motion of an earthquake of magnitude one. And it has a lot more energy. Now, since Richter came up with this, a lot of other scales have come along. But they all work in about the same way. The bigger the magnitude, the bigger the earthquake. And the bigger the energy there is to knock stuff over. It... Uh, you weren't, weren't supposed to see that. Oh, sorry. New from Faulty Foods, it's Quake and Oat cereal with a tremor in every bowl. See this? A seismometer measured an earthquake, probably in Alaska, and it was a big one. Ooh, ooh. Well, that was cool. All right. Let's talk about magnitude and intensity. So I want you to copy down this table right here. So here's kind of a general rule. Here's your magnitude and here's your intensity. If the magnitude is 1 to 3, it's an intensity 1. 3 to 3.9, it's a 2 to 3, etc. Now that's not exactly totally true. Remember, we kind of talked about that. Intensity really depends on how much you feel. That, that depends on a couple of things. How far you are away from something and also what type of soil you're on. If you're on bedrock, you're not going to feel the earthquake as much as if you're on loose sandy soil. So it depends depends upon a lot of variables. So intensity is not, uh, this is not a perfect diagram. Okay, 
Here is another one. Probably, I don't know if you to copy this down, but I think you should, uh, you could print it. I think it would be good if you could. And so we have the Mercalli scale, which is the Roman numeral scale we talked about right here. And then we have the Richter scale. And it, this is kind of the rough estimates right here, where you get uh, not felt, 2.5, all the way down here to great earthquakes. Okay, everything falls, total destruction, waves seen on the ground. These don't happen that often, once a year maybe. Um, we just saw one just.